Hello, my name is Vince Cerf. I'm Google's chief internet evangelist, and I'm sorry that I'm not able to join you in person, but I really appreciate the opportunity to just uh, chat with you for a few minutes about this new age of space, new challenges in space. And by the way, the little thing you see over my shoulder is a side effect of having a new grandson. We populated our library with uh, a bunch of stuffed animals, and that's one of them. I hope I'm not the other one. So let's just talk a little bit about possible aspirations for a kind of renewed uh, effort as we explore space both uh, near Earth and uh, farther away, the solar system, and even uh, farther than that. First of all, I want to remind you uh, that uh, way back in the 1960s, the Deep Space Network was built as a fundamental infrastructure uh, for the support of manned and robotic space exploration. That infrastructure was uh, used uh, across a variety of different missions. And the reason I want to remind you of that is that this notion of creating infrastructure which is multi-mission capable is terribly important and is something that we should be paying more attention to. Historically, uh, it's often been the case that missions have been uh, rather narrowly focused on a particular objective, a particular set of measurements in a particular location, and often uh, communications and other uh, infrastructure have been uh, based on what has been done in the past, as opposed to imagining if we could do something different, how would that uh, change the scope of the missions that we might undertake? You will all remember the successful landing of Pathfinder in 1997 and the subsequent landing of two rovers in 2004 and the Mars Science Laboratory uh, later and the uh, Phoenix lander, I think it's in 2008. Many of those systems uh, in the Mars uh, uh, exploration area, ended up using a store-and-forward uh, system, not just a simple point-to-point -point radio link. Uh, it was uh, driven in part by necessity. The uh, original uh, Spirit and Opportunity landers uh, ended up uh, not being able to use the direct uh, Mars-to-Earth path very effectively. It was a relatively low data rate, and if I understand correctly, the radios were overheating. So uh, the rovers and the orbiters were reprogrammed to do store and forward communication. My colleagues at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and other parts of NASA laboratories have been developing an interplanetary network. We've been testing it for quite some time. The prototypes are still in operation on Mars and in the uh, International Space Station. Standardization has been done on the Consultative uh, Committee for Space Data Systems. Um, this bundle protocol and some of its uh, uh, accoutrements, including security, uh, represent an example of an infrastructure investment. Uh, the theory is that as we launch new missions, uh, we'll be able to reprogram uh, these uh, spacecraft once they've completed their scientific missions to become part of an interplanetary backbone, which would essentially grow over time, creating uh, a kind of infrastructure that would support both manned and robotic space exploration. So my uh, pitch uh, to you is to th think uh, increasingly about cross-mission infrastructure, uh, an investment which will pay off over decades, uh, as the Deep Space Network has. So that's one theme uh, that I hope you'll take some time to discuss. Another theme, of course, is to consider going beyond the solar system. Uh, we have the Voyager spacecraft, which have penetrated the uh, envelope of our solar system and are out in interstellar space, but I'm sure some of you have noticed that there are an increasing number of uh, discussions going on and groups forming around the possibility of an interstellar mission. And here, of course, I'm quite excited. I won't be around uh, by the time uh, a, such a spacecraft arrives at, say, Alpha Centauri, but even thinking about the problem and working through some of the issues of propulsion and navigation and communication uh, is sort of like living in a science fiction story. So that's another uh, topic which I hope that some of you will take time to uh, talk about, and that's preparation for and infrastructure uh, to support an interstellar mission, preferably uh, to the nearest star system, the Centauri system. But, you know, as we discover more and more planets that are not all that far away, uh, 39 light years away to a pretty elaborate uh, system, if I'm remembering correctly, with multiple um, planets that are uh, potentially in the habitable zone. Uh, so thinking about even longer-term missions uh, is uh, equally mind-stretching. 
again, major issues associated with the timely uh, arrival, speeds that are uh, appreciable fractions of the speed of light, you know, how do we ever get uh, acceleration to that uh, speed, and over a period of hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, what kind of um, uh, engines do we need, uh, what kind of propulsion uh, technology do we need, uh, and of course, these things might take hundreds, if not thousands, of years to uh, uh, arrive at a destination. We have to think about how do we tell our uh, uh, colleagues to, to come after uh, we've left the, this planet, um, if, probably for good. Uh, how do we tell them about the uh, experiments that were launched hundreds of uh, years ago so that when the signals come back, hoping that they do, they'll know what to do with them, they'll be able to expect them and they'll have some idea of how they're encoded and so on. So those are all really interesting kinds of topics to uh, to chew on, at least uh, for me, and I hope maybe for you as well. Uh, I was allocated an entire hour, but I'm not going to record an hour's worth of talking head. I think you get pretty bored if you haven't become bored already. So uh, I hereby uh, relinquish my remaining time to the distinguished uh, party who will use it up, whoever that turns out to be. I hope somebody takes some good notes uh, at the meeting because I suspect there will be interesting insights that are derived from the really amazing range of topics that are currently uh, scheduled to be discussed and then the workshops that you'll be undertaking. And so I will be thankful uh, to learn more about what has happened in that discussion. And so I hope you'll take time to share that with those of us who couldn't attend. Meanwhile, I hope we'll cross paths on the net.